Hello, I'm Cathy Parker. This is a short slidecast to explain how we've estimated the amount of area a person needs to social distance in two town centre scenarios. One where people are going to want to walk around like shops and others where they're going to be stood still like queues. I'm going to start by introducing the research problem. With regards to retail, current government guidance in England asks employers to define the number of customers that can reasonably follow two metres social distancing within the store. It goes on to say, shopping centres should take responsibility for regulating the number of customers in the centre. And although those managing public space are not required to regulate numbers in the same way, they will need to manage queues and the usual footfall in their towns and high streets, with people being expected to adhere to social distancing in these environments too. No further guidance is given regarding how to calculate the number of people that can reasonably follow social distancing in these environments. And we appreciate that businesses are not keen for more prescriptive guidance. However, from our conversations with some retailers, property owners and place managers, it was clear that this is actually quite a complex issue. How do they work out capacity? The slidecast presents the findings of our working paper, which is available from the Earl on the slide. We've made the slidecast to show that staying two metres away from other people is not always as straightforward as having an area of four square metres around you. We've also made the slidecast to clear up confusion caused by a Guardian graphic that cites our work and which has caused upset with a lot of maths teachers on Twitter, with good reason. So, here we go. Current government guidance requires us to stay two metres away from other people. Now, as you only have to social distance if there's someone else nearby, we visualise the two metres as everyone having their own one metre of social distancing space. So if we put everyone in a bubble or a circle, the area required for each person to social distance is just pi r squared. And r, or the radius of the circle, is 1 metre. So the area required is 3.14 square metres per person. However, the problem with this conceptualisation is what happens when someone moves. With just 2 metres between people, as soon as someone moves, the person next to them has to too, in order to maintain the 2 metres between them. This photo from the United Arab Emirates illustrates the problem. Everyone's two metres apart, but only if they all stay sitting on their chairs. So this tight packing of people isn't reasonable in a lot of town centre environments. But we can think of somewhere it might be. When people are static, for example, like if they're queuing to get in a shop, here someone's allowed in and everyone just moves up one place in the line. Social distancing is maintained. Oh, look, there's a free slot there at the end of the queue if anyone needs it. We've already seen these sorts of arrangements in town centres and high streets. People being held in queues in different formations. These are square or rectangular packings. Or tessellations, to give them another name. And in these arrangements, not all the space is utilised by the circles. There's some wasted space, if you like, between them. So the capacity gets reduced. If we go back to our pi r squared equation, we need to divide it by 0.7854 and get an area of just under 4 square metres per person, rather than the 3.14 square metres per person, taking into account the square tessellation. No shit, Sherlock. We could have worked that out with some graph paper. But we think using circles and seeing this as a packing problem is useful as we also need to know what happens in space when people need to move about, or what happens in dynamic space as we refer to it in the paper. And that's not quite so straightforward. We've already seen that four square metres does not allow any freedom of movement. And in shops, markets and high streets, people are going to be moving about. So we introduced another bubble or circle. We put the one metre of social distancing space each individual needs in the outer circle and the inner circle represents the space needed for some freedom of movement. So the person on the left can move within their inner circle without violating the social distancing space. So the next question is how big does the inner circle have to be? What's its radius? And we've simply taken the average walking speed and assumed that the diameter of the circle is the distance someone will walk in a second. 
And it also takes half a second on average of people to stop walking. So we think that a diameter of a circle of 1.46 and a radius, the radius just being half of that, 0.73, is reasonable. It represents whether people are walking for a second or whether they have to stop walking because they, they see an obstacle or someone in front of them. However, we don't think a square packing is the most relevant for dynamic space. We think a hexagonal packing is more re relevant. This will mean a slightly higher density of people. But as we're solving this problem for retailers, markets and shopping centre managers, we assume that they'll want to optimise the space that they have available. In other words, try and fit more people into it. So our equation is simply pi open brackets r plus 1 close brackets squared and divide that by 0 0.9069 for the hexagonal tessellation. So we think each person requires 10.36 square metres of space in dynamic environments. Now, why is this upset maths teacher? Well, it's not our calculations. It's how these have been illustrated in The Guardian. There's no mention anywhere that we've incorporated packing or tessellations in our work, or that we have two types of space, static and dynamic. In this first graphic, the area of the circle is 3.14 square metres, not 4 square metres, but people were generous and thought the Guardian were just rounding up the numbers. So in this first example, it wasn't too bad, although it's never great when people get the same answer by using different equations. Remember, we're dividing by the density of the packing tessellation, and the Guardian readers don't know that. So we got an area of 3.99 or 4 square metres, and that's the figure that's cited in the graphic. Well, you know this is going to end in tears. And it did, with the second example which was supposed to represent our calculation of the area required to social distance in dynamic space, or to be more specific, in large retail environments. With the information available here, the correct area of the circle is 9.62 square metres, not 11 square metres. But again, it leaves out important detail, i.e. part of the equation. Guardian, reading, maths teachers were understandably upset. In our defence, we didn't draw the graphics and we didn't know what information the Guardian were going to take or, more importantly, leave out of, from our paper. So, thanks for listening and I hope that clears up some confusion. If you're interested in the work we've done, please read our working paper and you've got any comments on the paper, then please email us at ipm.mmu.ac.uk.